So just a quick summary on the Query Builder now. Um, why why are we actually talking about this now? Under the hood, you will always you will do just what we did here. And again, technically, you could always use the Query Builder, and you could achieve all your goals and all your queries and find all the elements that you need. The only problem is that it's a little bit tedious because the the UI Builder has this. You have to keep in mind at least that it has this functionality that it's that it's um, aggregating and uh, augmenting those selectors, and and that's actually intended because that way you can make um, rather complex selectors if you need to. But if you for basically for every selection you would have to create um, a new instance of a UI Builder. And to make this simpler, um, from now on, we are going to um, jump to the query and the queue library. And this was just to in order to understand um, how the big picture uh, actually works and how the queries actually work under the hood. So let's just clean this up a little bit because this is already quite a lot of code here. I just want to keep one of those for reference so such that we can compare it to to the queue code just like that let's now also just uh, say that we are actually not taking a list here anymore but we really just want one element and let's now see what we can do with the queue library. So in order to access um, the queue and the query uh, classes, we have to actually select a visual element and then go dot queue. And now we can see we have basically four ways to, um, to select one of those. Now you can see there's always one that is typed and one that is not typed. The one that is not typed is basically assuming um, that you just want a visual element. Again, all the controls in UI Toolkit are visual elements, actually, also labels, text, radio buttons, whatever. So you can always use that. Or when you know um, before you are doing the query that you need a specific thing like a label, then you can use the typed version. Um, and the same thing goes for, for the query. Now, depending on how how often or how much you're used to reading those uh, this this kind of documentation, like here in the in the IntelliSense, um, I hope that that you understand um, how you interpret this. Now, we talked before that um, the Q class, what it's basically giving you is just one element, and you can see that in the signature here by this first thing, which is uh, I cannot. I cannot select this or um, show this, uh, mark this in any way. But you can see that this first thing is basically telling you what uh, what the return type is. So you can see Q is always returning a um, a visual element. Or if you are not using the um, the untyped version, but you put in some different type, for example, you are using, you're searching for a label, you will obviously get a label, but you will always get one element. And for the query, and that's now hopefully, um, now the, the circle is kind of closing, hopefully, and, and uh, you agree that um, there was some sense in talking about the query builder, because the query is actually always um, delivering a query builder object. So this is basically just a intermediary intermediary step to to um, to spare us some typing. But in the end, you will get a query builder, and you can use all the stuff that we saw in the documentation before. So again, the um, the query is giving us a query builder, and the queue class, as you can see, just read this text: convenience overload shorthand for query.build.first. So Q is also just doing the thing that the query is doing. It is just on top of it, giving you the first element, basically. And that's just it. So just like that, everything is a query builder. Query is just a shorthand to get a query builder. And Q is just a shorthand to get one element out of, um, out of your query. Okay, let's now finally do something with it. 
Let's see, can we get the same result as we got with our builder here? What would we have to do? Now, the thing, we want a visual element, so we don't have to provide a type on the queue, as we saw. So the only thing that we have to do is um, kind of provide a name, and this is element one, and that is basically it. So I can do I can do just that and say, um, I don't know, let's say element one Q. And now could we do the same thing with query? Let's go visual element lm one query. And sure enough, we can do just the same thing and say, for example, that we want the first element. Now, this one time, I am not going to um, to actually put all those three elements in game in in the game view in the game mode because this in, in play mode. Sorry because this would last too long. Let's just do this quicker. Let's just start the debugger for a second and see if all those elements are the same. Okay, um, our breakpoint was triggered. Let's just jump over the last line. And now you can see down here, those are our three elements. This is the element we got with the builder code. The result is a visual element lm1 this is just this element that we have here um the second element which is this one here is the one we got with the q class we said that we can use this for single elements and that's what we wanted just like that we got the same element and finally with query.first we could achieve just exactly the same result Okay, let's just stop the debugger. Now, I hope that by now you are convinced, or at least uh, more convinced, um, that you can do the same stuff with query and uh, queue as we could do with the query builder. Now, obviously, this one, one example is um, not a very good uh, proof, but at least um, I hope that with also with the documentation that that we saw with the query giving us a query builder, as you can see here, um, we can now just accept that they are basically doing the same thing. And from now on, um, ignore the query builder, kind of throw it away, just like that, and use the short syntax and um, play around a little bit, see a couple of more examples to see what we can do with the query class. So let's first focus on the Q class because it's a little bit um, simpler. There's not really too much to say actually because you're just always getting one element that's uh, a lot simpler than when you have to um, take selections and then also kind of um, choose in inside of the selection. However, one question that you might ask is in the case of the builder, what we always had was like some explicit um, an explicit kind of name for the selector where we call some method like of type or name or class or something like that. Now, we don't have this here. The only thing that we did here is we just provided some name kind of um, with the, the, the kind of um, presupposition that this would be interpreted as a name. And so is that the only thing, for example, that we can use? How could we use a type or how could we use a class name, for example? Because you can actually use those. Now, in order to see that, let's just get a little bit... Um, rid of uh, this code to be in this state here again where we can use the IntelliSense. And now you can see with this queue, when we look at um, this IntelliSense here, what it's telling us is now there are uh, kind of several things that you can put in here. The default thing when you don't uh, provide anything is the name, as you can see here as a string, just as we did before. Now, in order to find a class, for example, 
we can expand this um, this IntelliSense. What we can do is we can just use it like this, where we provide, where we say that we are looking for a class name. And now we provide um, the USS class name. Now, I told you before that those elements are actually having a class name. And this is, this is called basic square element. Yes. And now let's see if we would actually get something out of this. Um, remember that Q on itself is always choosing the first element. So even if our uh, class name would provide several elements, when we use clue, uh, when we use Q, we automatically use this. Now I cannot move the cursor to it because it will disappear. The IntelliSense will disappear. But when you look on the IntelliSense um, panel here, you you will somewhere find this dot build dot first, and that means that Q is even if you have if, even if you would select a uh, selection like here with all the elements that have this class name, you will always just get the first element. So let's just see what this returns. I will just get my result element back that we can actually print. I will copy this reference over. And now I can use my mark element. We should be able to see the element. What would we expect? Um, Obviously, we would expect the first element to be selected. And voila, you can see actually all those three elements have the, this class name uh, on them. But because we're using Q, we just get um, the first. So with Q, what we can do is we can select elements for element names. We can select elements for class names. And the third wing, third thing that we can actually do is just select elements with certain types. So when we know that we want a um, a label, then we could do it like this. And now um, we would only find uh, labels basically that match the um, the selection criteria. For all for all the other stuff that is more complicated, when you have to chain things, when you have to get, uh, when you want to ask for, is something active, is something um, whatever el whatever other property you could check for, you have to work with query. 